Hello everyone, welcome to This Week in Medicine, April 25th, 2022. We had a hiatus. Uh, thank you, Carrie, for educating us on aspects of nutrition for the Fox Health Foundation, and we took a spring break. Again, we have a Fox Health Foundation education mis mission. Although our funds do not go to travel expenses, they go exclusively to running our wellness center and running our nutrition program. Uh, we still are invited to talks and Dr. Yamamoto is here giving a talk. We are hoping to continue these and I think that we will continue to do talks uh, and uh, public educational briefings on cardiovascular disease and aging in particular. And we'll just try and do this through COVID because everybody is trying to be as normal as possible. Here's another talk he's giving and we have a whole bunch of talks lined up for the year. We are running our center. It's uh, gaining traction, especially with the adults and the adult classes. So check those out on our uh, webpage. We'll try and get some more new classes. Still looking for people who want to teach some yoga classes, perhaps Tuesday or Thursday morning. So let us know if you know someone who's interested. And Carrie is doing an awesome job with our nutrition program. Thanks, Carrie. This is our wellness center where we do our exercise classes. So the inbox this week, why am I still positive? This is a big one. There are a lot of patients of mine who have had to take Paxlovid, and even after the Paxlovid is finished, they do seem to have positive antigen tests. Remember, we still have this protocol where if you get COVID, you can take an antigen test on yourself, the swab in the nose, that you can get uh, free from the federal government if you go to covid.gov. I think I ordered my second or third box recently. So you can take those tests and if they are negative, you can go off of your isolation on day six and wear an N95 mask and leave your house. You are still considered contagious. So we'll talk about that. But at least you don't have to hibernate in a room if you are negative on an antigen test. Um, I have a fever and bronchitis. We see this a lot. I have seen rhinovirus positive. I have seen influenza A. I've seen the common cold virus, which are coronaviruses that circulate that are not COVID. Uh, what do you do on a plane now that we had this announcement this week that public transportation does not require masking? We'll talk about that. Uh, should you take Paxlovid? That is not an easy question for everyone to answer, and a lot of it depends on your medication list. Omicron BA2 has been the recent vari variant that we have been experiencing, but there are some sub-variants which are very similar, except they probably are more contagious. Again, this was IBS Awareness Month. Hopefully we have time to get to that next week. Again, can I take Paxlovid? Sort of like should I take Paxlovid, but can depends on your medication list very often, and also how sick you are. To mask or not to mask, that's a big issue right now, especially if it's not a mandate to wear a mask on public transportation. And then should I get a fourth shot before I travel? I think uh, that's an individual question, but now that we're clearly in another Omicron surge, uh, it would be a good idea for most people if they're eligible to get a fourth shot. So Omicron continues. The cases are up in the past two weeks by 50%. I'm sure you've heard of this. BA2 is the most recent variant, but there are sub-variants of BA2. They're about the same, and they seem to cause about the same level of illness. Uh, they're just probably more communicable. The vaccine still does work, and, and by working, if we define that, we mean decreased hospitalization and death. So if that's your definition of working, it's working. It's also a variant that's not evading the immune system. So this variant may be more communicable, but it's not able to escape our immune protection from vaccination. Uh, it is more contagious. And again, uh, affinity for human cells is stronger, which is likely what's leading to some of that. There was an instant, interesting study out of Canada this week, I believe, that showed that if you are in a group of non-vaccinated people and you are vaccinated, that group of non-vaccinated people significantly increases your risk of getting COVID. So just being around a group of unvaccinated people or a higher percentage of unvaccinated people really does substantially increase your risk of getting COVID. Uh, if you're with other vaccinated people, the risk is clearly much lower. So you see this all over the airports, wear a mask. I don't know uh, which airport this is, but clearly if you've been in an airport recently, you've seen all these wear a mask signs. These people are wearing a mask, but now we've been told we don't need to. 
but not by a public health representative, by a judge. Again, federal judge voids the mask mandate. We talked about this a little bit. Airplanes and public transportation don't require them. This is being challenged because this was not a decision made on public health science. Uh, there is less risk when you're in the air. So when the airplane is high and you're floating around at 10,000 feet, the plane is ventilated and your risk for COVID is less. Uh, it's the transitions. It's getting on the airplane on the ground and landing. That's when the air is not ventilated as well and your risk for COVID is higher. So if you talk to infectious disease specialists and public health doctors, they'll tell you they wear N95 masks, not just in patient care, but in social settings so they can avoid getting COVID. And this is certainly what we've been doing in our office. If you wear an N95 mask, you still can go to social events. You could even slip food under your mask if you wanted to. Um, so if it's eating, that's the problem for you. Uh, but you don't want to get COVID, and again, that's somewhat of a personal decision that you personally don't want to get COVID, keep wearing your N95 mask and keep traveling. Um, the new messaging that's coming out from a lot of the public health officials, doctors, um, professionals who are making these decisions is that it is a personal decision. So does Paxlovid rebound exist? This is scant right now. Uh, in the internet and not too much in the literature and nothing so far in scientific journals. So we don't have any peer-reviewed uh, data on this. The information really comes from tweets and anecdotal reports. So I hesitate to bring this up, but it's, since it's something that I have seen, I think, with Paxlovid, um, and anecdotes and clinical instances are where we start our scientific discovery uh, we might as well talk about it because this probably uh, is happening uh, or at least it requires an explanation from FDA and potentially from Pfizer. So you can test positive on an antigen test, not the PCR test. Remember, don't do that one. That's only for testing for sensitivity if you might be positive but your antigen test says you're negative. So this is for diagnosis only. What you do with the antigen test is test after you've taken a full dose of Paxlovid for five days to see if your antigen test is negative and you're no longer contagious. But there are some people who will test positive again after testing negative after taking Paxlovid and they're testing positive at 10 days 10 to 14 of illness and for some people as long as 20. So is this a real phenomenon? Well, I think I've seen it maybe in a couple of patients. Uh, again, this is at the level of anecdote and tweet. So this is by no means any bit of science. This is just observation, but scientific observation often is the springboard to real science. So what is Paxlovid rebound? It's when you have illness again after you've taken Paxlovid. Um, if you have a positive test at day 10, 11, or 12, and you wonder what is going on, why am I still testing positive? Well, this assistant professor of medicine at Harvard and an infectious disease physician says, maybe you have this phenomenon of rebound, which means that you killed most of the virus for those first five days, but in a small set of patients, the virus rebounds and increases in significant in numbers enough that your antigen test went from negative to positive. So are you contagious? Yes, if there's enough to turn that antigen test positive, you are contagious. So this researcher is looking into this and we'll have to see if she finds something and if anyone else finds anything. Because at this point, it's possible for some people, probably a low percentage, it looks like about 10%, to have an increased viral load recurrence or recovery of the COVID virus after it's been substantially killed by Paxlovid. Uh, again, anecdotal evidence, I saw this report, report from a physician in Hawaii um, who wonders if this is a real thing. Once you start looking at the data, what did Pfizer actually tell the FDA? If you look at these, they're the red lines and the gray lines. The red lines and gray lines are related to your viral load. So here is the SARS-CoV-2 load. Starts up pretty high when you're sick, of course, at baseline. Goes down when you're taking the Paxlovid. And then at day 10, there are about 10% of people who shoot up. Um, and the gray lines and red lines are related to uh, mutations of the virus because they wanted to find out if this represents a difference in um, 
disease state because you have a mutated virus or because the drug is causing a mutation. So it doesn't look like that's happening. So this slide does not indicate that. But what it might indicate is that people hit a low point with Paxlovid, but some, uh, whether there's a mutation in their virus or not, uh, have an increase in viral load at day 10 after taking Paxlovid. And that's concerning because it means that there is a small percentage, maybe 10% of people who take Paxlovid who are not contagion free at day 10 or later. So if you're still feeling sick, what do you do if you just took Paxlovid? So Paul Sachs is, again, someone we can trust. He's the Director of Division of Infectious Disease. So, sorry about that. Um, so we can trust him, he's an expert. Uh, so this is what he's hearing from patients as well. He said, you shouldn't ignore your symptoms. If they come back after you took Paxlovid, think that this might be a recurrence. Test yourself again with the antigen test. And if you're positive, unfortunately, you need to consider yourself contagious. So what do you do about it? Well, they didn't really tell us what to do about it from FDA. And that's um, something that physicians are uh, concerned about. Um, it's not addressed in the clinical trials, but as he says, and remember, we trust him, he's an infectious disease specialist, it makes intuitive sense to retreat patients. So if you're still antigen positive uh, and you took the Paxlovid and you feel sick, if you want to, talk to me, talk to your doctor about taking Paxlovid again. My references for this rebound, again, because this is not hard scientific data, this is anecdotal. Um, came from a report from uh, the Boston Globe. You can look for it April 21st. This is the um, journalist who wrote this article and quoted those physicians in the Harvard Medical System. And then Buzz Hollander is a physician in Hawaii, and I took this from his Paxlovid rebound report. Uh, so thank you to both of them. So the fourth shot, remember, uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. It is available. Do we have enough immunity from December and January to prevent BA2 now? No, I had answered this yes a couple of weeks ago, but now that we have a 50% increase in Omicron, if you are at risk, get a fourth shot. Um, again, I've been doing a study of antibody levels myself on patients who are interested in tracking their antibody levels, and indeed, some patients are having low levels, and it really does look like they would benefit from a fourth shot. Um, did these original vaccines induce good enough immunity against Omicron? It doesn't look like it because people are still getting Omicron despite being vaccinated. They're just not dying, thank goodness. Um, and is there a better booster? Well, we've been told that Pfizer and Moderna will have something better Omicron specific in the fall. Uh, so the second wave of Omicron is here. Uh, stool studies from the Broad Institute. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, which I just saw two weeks ago when we were touring the Boston area, indicate that, yes, if you look at uh, sewage, you can see the genetic imprint of Omicron. So we know that it was increasing uh, probably about six weeks ago, and then we noticed it here, and now it's noticed throughout the country. So the Broad Institute looking at the DNA that human beings waste in sewage is a good way to track this. Again, not sicker than initial Omicron, but still pretty sick, you do need to pay attention to these drug interactions. This was our Broad Institute walk by. We walked by Broad as we were touring MIT. Uh, thank you, Broad. Paxlovid to the rescue on the airplane. Can you take it on the airplane? Uh, no, probably not, because if you have a prescription for Paxlovid, it means you tested positive, because you're really only supposed to have this medication if you did test positive. You can't take it in advanced kidney uh, and liver failure. Uh, not renal, that's redundant, um, and you can't take it with you to Paris. And I do have patients in Europe right now who are testing positive, and I don't know what the supply is for Paxlovid in Europe. Uh, again, these Paxlovid drug interactions are real. Um, these, this medication, Paxlovid, is very similar to medications we use with HIV treatment. Uh, ritonavir is an HIV treatment medication, and there are definite interactions with medications. There are probably some medications that have not been studied for their interactions. Uh, you can look them up yourself if you want to, ask your pharmacist. Right now I think it's a good partnership between the pharmacist and myself to flag any of these drug interactions um, so we can either reduce your dose or sadly in some cases patients are on medications 
that will not clear their system in time. So even if they stop that medication, like antiarrhythmics, which are heart medications, it may not leave their blood in enough time that they could take Paxlovid within the first five days. Test to treat, again, probably not a good idea, and I think this has fallen by the wayside. Thankfully, we have not heard as much about it, and that's because we need physicians who know patients, know their medication lists, including over-the-counter drugs. Tony's tip of the week, um, do not message the office in Epic or MyChart because our staff does not have Epic MyChart access. This is a physician-patient access. Uh, so only I have access to it, so message us through the info at foxhallmedicine.com or call a dedicated refill line and ask your pharmacy to electronically notify us. For the fast pitch, the time of your booster is an individual decision, uh, but given that we're in another Omicron surge, if you want to get a fourth shot and you are eligible, you should. You also might want to wait until the fall because we have been told that there should be a more Omicron-specific booster for Moderna and Pfizer by then. Some people still need to mask, so let's be respectful of everyone because there are people with uh, immunocompromised uh, systems because of cancer, because of underlying disease. Uh, so we still need to respect everybody masking. And unfortunately, it really is a public health decision uh, and that decision has been made by a judge in the past week and we need to review that. Masks can prevent infection, but a booster may not. So remember, the best protection if you don't want to get this uh, is to mask and to get vaccinated. Again, thank you for your attention. This is our, our, period, our pyramid of health. Uh, we're going to talk about some more of these things when I don't have to talk about Omicron anymore. Uh, here's our book about stroke prevention. And again, please subscribe and hit like. Thank you very much for your time.